Thank you. Can everyone hear me? Sounds like it. I can hear an echo. All right. So I'm Pat Shields. Um, I'm a principal software engineer at Pronto Software. I run the architecture team. I'm going to talk a little bit about Vault and the idea of security as a service. So I'm not a security engineer, which makes this a very dangerous talk for me to give. Um, I've worked on a lot of different things. I've worked in high performance computing, legal compliance, high scale SaaS, uh, like ad networks and email marketing. Um, but when I started at my current gig at Bronto, we were looking at our architecture and our security practices and saying, it feels like something doesn't fit anymore. We had these questions swirling around like, how do we store a database password? How do we encrypt customer data? Um, how do we control who has access to what in production? And they crossed a lot of the traditional AppSec, NetSec boundaries we were used to. So I, I kind of call these DevOps security problems, and they've grown with the, the DevOps architectures we're building. So I call the lack of tooling around this uh, the pickle we're in. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to talk about secret management, which if you're, if you're at all familiar with Vault, you'll be familiar with that term. Um, audit trails and why they're actually the coolest part of this whole system. And then a little bit about where to go from here. So Bronto, where I work, like a lot of companies that started, say, 15 years ago, had a monolithic web architecture. Uh, basically, the entire security principle here is lock people out of production. Only a couple of people have access. Hopefully, none of them are devs, um, and, and we just try to keep everybody out. But our architecture looks more like this. Actually, this is such a nicer picture than probably what most of our architectures look like. Um, and our security practices are still pretty much the same. Maybe we carve off little spaces, and we try to keep other people out of our little spaces. But data is flowing around everywhere. Uh, we have mixed environments. A lot of things have changed, but our security practices have not. And when we don't give people good solutions to problems, they just do what works. So they check SSH keys into GitHub because they needed it somewhere. Uh, this isn't a problem that just affects small companies. It's not a problem of company maturity. It's basically just a tooling problem. We haven't given ourselves what we need to accomplish this. So Vault is, is one stab at a solution to that problem. And I, I call it DevOps Security as a Service. That's my term, not, not HashiCorp's. Um, but it's looking at these problems I was talking about and trying to find a, a good solution to them. And what's interesting about Vault to me is that it's, it feels like a tool focused on empowerment, right? It is going to present all these solutions through an HTTP interface, which is something that most devs and ops folks are going to be really comfortable with. Um, and it's not going to just say, hey, go back to that monolith. It's going to try to figure out solutions that work in the kinds of architectures most of us are dealing with now. Um, I'll also note that Vault is open source. There's like a commercial component you can buy. Everything I'm going to talk about today is, is the open source side. So let's talk about secret management, kind of the marquee feature. Um, it can mean a lot of different things. For the purposes of this talk, let's just say if it means if I can't put the password in the config file, then where the hell does it go? So we can walk through an example. We can imagine we have a service. Uh, it's got to talk to some database, and we're going to need a password to do that. So how, how could we do that in Vault? Well, we have some operator in the top left. Um, they're going to authenticate, get a token. They can write some secrets for an application, uh, the database password being the important one here. Later on, the service machine can go and read that from Vault, get back a credential that it can use to authenticate with the database. Now, we could also generate a password for it on demand. And these are often called dynamically generated secrets. These are all the many different systems they integrate with um, and kind of have a managed credential. But this is maybe more advanced. We, this is something you could investigate if you actually go down this road. Because static passwords work pretty well. Um, so I skipped over something kind of important here, which is that when we read that password, we're going to need to authenticate just like our, our human operator did, or otherwise we haven't really solved the problem here. So, Lots of different ways to do authentication in Vault. It's kind of one of the key problems you'll need to solve if you're going to get started with it. Um, I want to call your attention to a couple in particular. So one is we've got AWS and Google Cloud support set up. So there's a, a kind of steady path. You can just head down and get it integrated. Um, there's also Kubernetes support through the service count token. AppRoll and TLS on the machine side are kind of, I'm in my data center. I've got to roll my own thing. Um, but the key idea here is you don't have to build it all from scratch. You've probably got some tools you can leverage and, and start authenticating both your, your people and your machines, and maybe even your cyborgs have lots of different options. So I talked a little bit about mechanics, uh, kind of how we would read a database password, how we would authenticate. But I want to talk about philosophy, because I think this is actually the more interesting part. 
So in security, there's this terminology called break glass. It's like if you have a fire axe or a fire hose, and if you're in a hotel tonight, you'll probably walk past one, and you can, you can break through the glass and pull the alarm or, or grab the axe or whatever. We need the same thing in our production environments, because when you're having an outage, your devs are going to want to get into the database. They're going to want to get into systems they don't normally have access to. And if you pretend that that's not going to happen, it's just going to happen in ways you don't know about, right? They will find the natural path. So what if instead we focused on knowing what people were doing, right? Regardless of their, their immediate needs at the moment, give them a little bit more access and then maybe see what they do with it. So can we give people access to a database they wouldn't normally have access to? And just say, hey, if you access this, we're going to open like a security ticket. And we're going to ask, why did you go start querying this customer data? But if they say, because the database was melting, maybe that's a valid answer. So audit trails or audit logs are a way to accomplish this, and Vault implements a pretty good one. So we'll get a record of every single operation. So if you go request database password, we're going to have a record of that. Now, we won't know what you did with the secret or with the credential you got, but we'll at least have a central sort of pane of glass to look through all those accesses that are happening throughout your systems. I think this is actually the cool part, like I said, because it gets you out of that lockdown mode, right? When we talked about the monolith, we started, everything was just kind of constrained into one little place, and we kept everybody else out. But this is going to let us open things up to people and let them do their, the job they need to do. So text on this is probably small. It's not super important. But this is an actual uh, vault audit log record. It's JSON. You've got a username in there. You've got a remote IP address, uh, client token, so the token that was used to access the data. We even have a hash of the secrets that they got back. So it's very easy to imagine that you have something streaming through these as they're coming through and deciding, oh, hey, that, that looks weird. This person should not just access this particular piece of data on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's find out what they did with it. There are some other things we can do, too. Uh, response wrapping is super cool. So the idea here is we have a secret, and we want to share access to that secret to a system that wouldn't normally have access to it. So in this case, let's imagine we've built our system such that we have some service, and we're going to deploy that service. And when we deploy it, we're going to bundle a secret along. So when the deployer requests this password, for instance, it's going to say, give me back a response wrapped version of that. And they're going to get back a link. And it's a one-time use link. It's going to be valid for, say, 15 seconds. These aren't fixed numbers, but for the purposes of example. And we'll actually log that we created that. We can go ahead and pass that link onto the service machine who can, as you might expect, go ahead and read it. Now, at this point, if somebody intercepted that particular link and opened it up, this read fails, which obviously leads you to ask the question, what went wrong? Right? We can open up tickets. We can start to dig into it and figure out who intercepted it, what they did with that information. It might be time to rotate some passwords. But if everything's successful, password comes back through. Uh, and Service Prado one can go on its merry way. So how would you get started today with Vault? If you cannot deploy it into production, one option is to use it as the team or organizational password manager that has the worst UI you have ever seen in your entire life. This is not one password for teams. Um, but it'll get you comfy with it. You'll start to understand how it structures things. Um, Authentication, like I said, one of the hardest problems you're going to have to solve, because the whole point here is that we're, we're controlling who has access to different pieces of information. So if you can use a seed secret system, like a Kubernetes service account token, great. If you're on a cloud provider and you can leverage all the permissions you've already built into that, also great. Once you do get that authentication problem solved, go ahead and expose your applications directly to Vault. Someone on your team is going to raise their hand, and they're going to say, let's build like a shim layer so we could switch out you know, our secrets provider easily. But the thing is, there's all sorts of other cool options available to you if you're talking directly to Vault, like doing key management or encryption as a service, an API for secure random bytes. If you are, are there any lonely Java programmers out there who have tried to figure out how to use crypto libraries uh, to do their job, this will help you. So we talked about the problems Vault solves, how to use Vault to, for instance, access the database password. How you would authenticate with Vault is either a human or a machine. Um, audit trails, response wrapping, how you can use them to open your systems up a little more. 
and how you might get started with this today. I'm out of time. Thank you very much.